What is Faith Promise? Faith Promise is a way for the local church to be able to fund reaching the world with this great gospel. Faith Promise is an agreement that, as God provides, the donor will give a specific amount on a regular basis to the missionary offering of the local church. Faith Promise funds remain in the church locally and are dispersed by the church to fund their missions program as needed. Faith Promise Giving incorporates the dynamics of faith, love, commitment, consistency, and the sure promises of God. Faith Promise works. It is a promise to give a financial gift for global outreach based on faith. The Faith Promise commitment is motivated and compelled by faith. Trusting that God will allow you the means to give and serve needs around the world for His glory. It's a commitment of a certain amount of money God puts on your heart as those funds become available. The faith in Faith Promise is my trusting God to enable me to give more than I thought I could give while still meeting all of my own stewardship commitments. It's the abundance, the money that I have after everything is paid off. The promise is my trusting God because He promised to supply all my needs. Faith promise is a biblical principle. Faith promise follows a scriptural plan of giving based on the apostolic method in 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Faith promise works because it is a purely biblical basis of giving by faith. It is not what we give in stewardship such as tithes and offerings. It is not sacrificial giving that happens in times of great need or compassion. It is the act of faith in believing God for what is not seen and allowing Him to make it into substance and evidence. The Apostle Paul wrote, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. 2 Corinthians 8.3 mentions giving beyond their power. The heart of faith promise giving requires the exercising of faith for fulfillment of the promise. Trusting God's plan and promise opens the doors of blessing into every life. This is more than a financial fundraising tool. It is actually a tremendous spiritual experience that blesses and brings blessing from God's perfect provision. Put your trust in God by getting involved in faith promise today. Luke 6:38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured unto you again. So how does someone make a faith promise commitment? Prayer is the most important step in any decision making. In anything in life you commit to, you have to stick with it, realizing that your faith will grow as you stay committed to the promise. Look for unexpected ways God provides maybe an unexpected raise or inheritance. Have faith. Give as God enables you to give. Many of our churches have countless stories of times where someone who made a faith promise and didn't know where it would come from, but then God worked a miracle for His glory. Remember faith promise is the above and beyond giving. Faith promise does not replace your tithe or offerings. It is a promise between you and God. Faith Promise needs your faithfulness to give as God enables you. You have a Faith Promise card and anyone can fill it out. Parents, teens, and even kids can make a Faith Promise. Faith compels us to give everything for the spread of this gospel. As our act of worship, we choose to be used up for His glory. Thank you for being a part of Faith Promise and Global Missions. Welcome to Cross Point Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Theron Crawford Sr. I'm the lead pastor here. I'm doing that because Pastor Theron Crawford Jr., we also call him Pastor T, or if you know him well, you can call him Pastor TT. He enjoys that very much. <laughs> but it's great to have everybody here with us today. And if you're visiting with us today, we're so thankful you're able to be here and be a part of our service. I believe God has great things in store for us today. And I really believe that every time we walk into the, into the Lord's house, because the Word of God is going to be opened, and this could be the service that would change your life. 
And so thank you for being here with us today. For those that are regulars here, uh, I got a couple just quick things I'd like to ask you to do. Um, we are collecting our faith promise cards. You got those. You got that notification this week in your uh, either your email on text. And uh, this is our faith promise, which you just saw. We've been doing this for the last month or so. We are collecting them today. So you should have got one when you came in. If you've not turned one in yet, fill it out. You, half of the thing, you go ahead and you'll rip it off. Like that half of it you turn in, half of it you keep. Uh, and you don't have to put your name on it. We don't know what people give here. That's between you and the Lord. I don't look at tithing statements here. Uh, but we want part of it to keep in your Bible to kind of be a reminder of the fact that you made this commitment to the Lord, not to the church, not to the pastor, but to the Lord. And the other part of it, once again, give to the church so that we can know kind of gauging going forward what missions we can continue to support. Uh, one other thing we want to do every year, we do a, a theme this year. Our theme is greater things. And we believe that the Lord is going to do greater things than he has in the last year. And as we continue to grow and have faith in God, God once again will bless us if we have the right kind of faith, believing without doubting. And so every, every year we do do um, some T-shirts uh, that we do usually do a whole banquet and do a lot of different things. We're not going to do that this year because of COVID, uh, but we are going to have a special One Vision Sunday on the last Sunday of January. And so what we'd like to ask you to do, uh, we're going to buy basically everybody who's a regular here at Cross Point, or if you're visiting and you already know, within the first five minutes, this is a place where you're going to come to church. Okay, you can go ahead and sign up here as well. Uh, there's no cost to the t-shirts. We're getting a great price on them. So we're going to go ahead and purchase them th as far as the church is concerned. So don't let that hold you back. But we need your name as well as your shirt size. So if you could help me with that, they're going to pass this around throughout the, uh, the morning service. And once again, for you and your family, as well as even the kids, if you want to go ahead and put their name down there as well, we'll try to make sure they get uh, a t-shirt going forward. Greater things. Our God is great. Why are you here today? Uh, we're here to hear the word of the Lord, right? But we're also here to praise his name. And so let's go ahead and stand, please. And we're going to sing a song, one of my favorite songs, Here I Am to Worship. It's a newer song, great song. Sing it from your heart this morning. prayer today we'd ask once again that we pray for those of course in our congregation but also those that are in our state and around the world that are uh, have COVID uh, it is still very actively uh, attacking people and I heard of a number of folks this week that are in the hospital on incubators and different things to try to uh, uh, be able to get their breathing in line and I have also heard of a couple of people who passed away this week and so we just need to keep those folks in our prayer we ought not to live in fear Okay, but that also doesn't mean we shouldn't have common sense. And so let me encourage, that's a strange thing in the United States, isn't it? You can have that. 
but uh, let's go ahead and continue to pray that the Lord would watch over those folks. And then also, uh, we've had a couple uh, deaths uh, that have taken place recently here. Uh, Judy Hoxima, uh, who is a member over at uh, Solid Rock Baptist, a lady that my wife and I uh, love dearly. She's so sweet to us. Went home to be with the Lord earlier this week. And so we can keep their family in our prayers. Uh, but also the Buscard family, uh, Barb Buscard, who's been coming for quite a while uh, to our church, faithful lady, appreciate her so much. Her husband went home to be with the Lord. We will be having a, uh, a viewing or a, a fellowship uh, visitation on Tuesday night from 5 to 7 at the Cook Funeral Home. If you'd like to go over there, stop in there. Uh, they're doing a private, uh, private memorial because there's a limitation on the number of people that are able to be there. So it's just family that will be there uh, for that. But I encourage you, just pray for Barb. Pray for her two boys as well as they are bereaved of their loved one. And then let's pray for our nation. Our nation needs prayer. My goodness, what a week. Uh, but let's just be praying that uh, calmer heads at some point will prevail uh, and that people just need to take a deep breath. Uh, but it's not just in Washington, it's around our entire nation that there seems to be so much division. So let's just be praying for our nation. In our church, we are uh, always emphatically supportive of our troops. And to me, those are, that's not a Democrat, independent, Republican thing. That's an American thing. And so we support our troops here. We try to encourage our troops. So let's pray for them as they're in harm's way as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for today. Lord, we give you the praise, glory, and honor for everything that is being done. Lord, we trust in you, Lord, for all things. Lord, as we come before you, Lord, we acknowledge the things that we have asked for prayer. Lord, pray for our nation. Lord, may it be healed. Lord, may you touch the president's heart as well as the Congress and judges, others. Lord, I pray that they would, uh, Lord, rely upon you for strength and wisdom. Father, also I do pray that you would uh, be with the families that are in our church that uh, are bereaved. Lord, I pray you'd be with the Buscard family. Lord, watch over them. Be with uh, Judy's family as well. May you watch over them. Father, I pray that you would just be gracious in each situation. Lord, encourage them. May the Christians that are around them lift them up in prayer. But Father, if there be those that don't know you as Savior, Lord, may they think about and contemplate the place of eternity where their soul will spend. And Lord, may they receive you as personal Savior. Father, I do pray, Lord, that you watch over us as a church today. May we honor you, glorify you in that which we say and do. May we lift your name up on high. And may you be glorified. In thy precious son's name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We'll have you remain standing for our next song. So, uh, I need thee every hour. Did you pray that this morning? Have you prayed it this week? That, Lord, I need you. There's nothing wrong with saying we need help. And we can run to God every time we need it. So let's really have that as we sing today. I need you. Hold on one second. There, go back one. You're on the chorus. There we there go. We go. <laughs>
come to him broken. Amen. We can come to him just as we are. We don't have to be perfect, thank God. Amen. <laughs> so I don't know about you. Where's my wife? She needs to plug her ears. I'm not perfect. <laughs> you know, and I can come to God just as I am. And he wants to hear from me. So we'll really sing that. Really think about that as we sing that today. Just as I am. Just as seated have all the children be dismissed those that are sixth grade and below can go to children's church with brother scott gillum and the helpers there you can make your way out you're not required to but you're welcome to and the rest of the kids are going out if you're visiting with us just follow the rest of them uh if you're over sixth grade you will be carded and you'll not be able to leave the auditorium to go with them you have to stay here with us so aren't you thankful that god has accepted us as well, I'm always thankful of that. And um, we're showing the story of a doctor, a nurse, and a top executive of a health insurance company 
all died and stood before St. Peter at the gates of heaven. Peter asked him, he said, well, why should I let you in? What, have, what did you do to your life? Well, how did you spend your life? And the doctor said, I, decided, I devoted my life to the sick and the needy and have a part in caring for health of thousands of people. Peter said, that sounds great. Go into heaven and live forevermore. He looked at the nurse. He said, what about you? She said, well, I trusted Christ as my Savior, but I've also supported the doctor and his patients my entire life as an adult and have taken time to explain things patiently with each person and have helped them to live a healthier life. St. Peter said, well, Andrew, that's wonderful. He said, you can proceed in with the doctor and enjoy heaven forevermore. He looked at the health insurance executive. Said, what about you? What have you done with your life? He said, I was the president of a very large health organization, an insurance company. I was responsible for the health care of millions of people all over the country. St. Peter said, oh, I see. Well, you can go in as well, but you can only stay two nights and then you're out of here. <laughs> I'm thankful that when we come to the Lord, we come as we are and that he receives us and accepts us, but he doesn't leave us as we are. That's the part that I think gets missed sometimes in our churches today. He does accept us as we are. He loves all of us. Thank you. He loves all of us. That's, I'm, I'm, that's a dramatic pause, but I was waiting for a response. Huh? He loves all of us. He loves all of us equally. Huh? But when he comes in and changes a life, he does not leave us as we are. He changes us from the inside out. Amen. Take your Bibles, please, and turn over to Exodus chapter 16, please. Our theme for this year is greater faith or greater things. John chapter 14, verse number 12. You won't have to read it right now, but John chapter 14, verse number 12, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, shall he do also. Praise the Lord for that. But the next part of the verse is a verse that I want us to focus on as we go through this series for the next couple months. And greater works than these shall he do. Do you realize what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying, you're amazed at the things that I've done, the miracles that I've performed, the doctrines that I've taught. He says, you've, you've been amazed at these things. I have caused the, bl the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak. I've cast out demons. I have even raised people from the dead. But Jesus says, greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. The extent of God's ability to work in our churches, to work in our marriages, to work in our families, and to work in our individual lives is not limited by a time frame. It's not li limited by a day and age in which we live. I do believe it is limited by our faith. What we are willing to step out in faith and to accomplish for Him. Today I'd like to talk about the idea of day-to-day -day faith and having faith day by day. Every day is your faith getting stronger. That's rhetorical. Don't answer that one. But every day, can you say that this year I'm a stronger Christian than I was in January 2020? Now, we've had a lot to have faith about. We've had a lot to pray about this last year. But is our faith greater now than what it was then? And the only way that's going to accomplish is by day-by-day day faith. Now, we're going to look at the entire chapter of Exodus chapter 16. Don't panic. We're not going to go simply verse by verse. We'll be here until Monday night, okay? Some, some of you folks think, I thought we usually are here until Monday night. But I want to speak to us really just simply as we look at this passage. It's a story about manna, how God blessed his people with manna from heaven, and how day by day there was an expectation. You and I need to enter into every day. We need to enter into every day saying, Lord, I need you every hour. Like the song we sung, right? We need to come every day and say, Lord, I need you today. Do we realize that when we get up and we don't bother to open our Bible and spend time with him, we don't bother to drop to our knees or to pray and give God the day and say, Lord, help me today to act as a Christian should act and give me guidance today. Every day that I don't do that, what I'm in essence is telling the Lord, I've got today, I don't need you. And he says, that's pretty harsh. Well, stop and think about it. He wants to commune with us day by day. 
Though the days that I choose not to, what I'm saying is my agenda is more important, Lord, than your agenda. I've got today covered. I don't necessarily need your guidance today. I can get through today on my own. Now, we as Christians know that we ought never to say that to the Lord. Once again, whether or not we don't say it, but we live it. So I want to talk day by day faith. Have you ever looked at somebody that's gone through a great trial, a tremendous trial? Maybe they lost a spouse. They lost a loved one. Maybe they lost their children. Maybe they've... Uh, experienced a complete financial collapse, lost their house, lost their job, lost everything, and they're living on the street. You look at somebody and you go, how does that person still have a smile on their face? How does that person still say, praise God for how good he's been to me? We may look from the outside and say, I don't know how that happens. I promise you this, it's a day-by-day faith. It's a day-by-day faith. But can I encourage you to think about something else we'll talk about at the end of the service here? It's okay. It's all right. And you'll really panic. It's all right. The door just shut a little hard. You ever seen that happen? We can go take a look, but it's uh, <laughs> it's not real exciting. I'll be honest with you. It just goes. That's all it does. But <laughs> that was the Holy Spirit coming in. He just shut the door. <laughs> day by day faith requires initial faith. Huh? My life verses, but without faith, it's impossible. To please him. See, what do you mean by initial faith? The faith of salvation is essential. The faith of salvation is essential. None of us, can I share this with you? None of us are automatically born into God's family. We aren't. John 3.16 says, But God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, we have to make that choice to say, I'm going to receive Jesus Christ as Savior. I'm going to, by faith, understand that I'm a sinner, that I am bound for hell. Because I am in sin, I cannot get to heaven on my own. I need Jesus Christ's payment for my sins. Now, none of us deserve that. None of us can earn it. In fact, you can even set up a tent over here in the foyer and live here for the rest of your life, and that does not mean that you'll get to heaven. We can't give enough money to the church or to good projects to get to heaven. We can't earn our way. It must be us understanding that I am lost, that I am without Jesus Christ. I cannot save myself, but that Jesus Christ came to this earth, died upon a cross for the sins of mankind, and simply by coming to him and saying, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know what you've done for me. I ask you to come into my heart, take away my sin, and take me to heaven when I die. Without that, there is no salvation. It does not matter how good the person is. It doesn't matter what church they joined. It doesn't matter how long they've been a member at a church. Salvation only comes through Jesus Christ and Him alone. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So where does this day-to-day faith start? It starts at salvation. You can't have day-by-day faith if you're not first one of his children, if you're not first a child of God, if you're not first having trusted Christ as your Savior, that's the very first step. I wonder, have you ever been unprepared for something? Some of you are like, yeah. Procrastinators of the world, unite tomorrow. <laughs> when I was in school, they'd go ahead and give a test. And generally, I was notorious for not quite being ready. Anybody else with me? Straight C students. (laughs) The teacher would get up to go ahead and give you a test. You're like, oh, man, I forgot all about it. You start to sweat. Now, I went to a Christian school, so they always had somebody stand and pray. Usually, they'd ask somebody that looked spiritual and they got good grades. I thought that was the wrong person to ask. You want to ask the guy that's a straight D student. He's really going to know how to pray and get a hold of God because he needs it. But that A student would say something like this, Lord, help us to remember the things we've studied. I hated that. The things I've studied, I've got those. I need the things I didn't study. That's, I need the miracle there. But as you take the test, you get to the first question, you're like, I don't quite know what that one is. I'll come back to that. You get to the second one, I don't quite know that one either. When you get about six or seven in and you don't know any of them, you start to sweat. Huh? I hope that you and I can say that when we we meet, Lord, that we are truly ready. 
that we've accepted him as our Savior. But also, Christian, can I ask you this? Can we go into every day and say, Lord, no matter what happens to me today, no matter what life throws at me, no matter what the, the issues may be in my life, I'm ready for today. I've spent time with you. I'm ready. Day by day faith. We're going to look at this passage here in Exodus chapter 16, but I want to notice we're going to take into three simple points here. If you have a bulletin, you got one that came in, the backside has a worksheet. You're welcome to look through there, follow along with us, or draw a caricature of the pastor. Either one is fine. <laughs> Number one, the Lord had promised sustenance. The Lord had promised sustenance. You say, what do you mean by sustenance? He had promised to keep and to take care of all their needs. When he led them from, from uh, Egypt through the wilderness, he promised them, I'm going to take care of you. Do you realize something? You and I do remember that. The Lord saved you and he's leading you. He's not going to leave you all by yourself. And he's not going to leave you stranded. He has promised, not only am I going to be there with you, but I'm going to take care of all your needs. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19. The Bible says, but my God shall supply what? All your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Not according to my riches. Right? Say Why? Because sometimes I had times in my life I didn't have two nickels to rub together. I didn't have anything. But you know what? My reliance on my Christian walk and my following God's plan for my life is not relying upon what I own. It's relying upon what he owns. That's why you ever get the idea the Lord doesn't worry? Huh? We worry sometimes, but the Lord never worries. He's got it all covered. One of my other favorite verses is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. The Bible says, As it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I believe when we get to heaven, we're going to see all the blessings that we missed because we took it out of God's hands and began to worry about it on our own. The Lord says, No, just trust me. Over and over again throughout Scripture, and I could go through a whole list of Scripture, but over and over again, we're reminded that God loves us, he's going to care for us, and he's going to supply for all of our needs. In this story here in the Exodus chapter 16, we find here also that the Lord promises sustenance that there were multiplied blessings that the Israelites had already seen. Before we get to chapter 16, God had already shown himself strong for the children of Israel. You remember the story? Some of you went to Sunday school, maybe you remember this story. He would brought the ten plagues upon Egypt. Remember the ten plagues? Huh? Ten different plagues, literally decimating the most powerful nation in the ancient world. To the point that the tenth plague comes and the death angel passes over the entire land of Egypt. And those that had the blood sprinkled upon the doorpost were spared. But every home that trusted in their own way of protection, without the blood, the firstborn of every family died that night. To the point that the Pharaoh finally says, leave. Get out of here. We don't want you here anymore. So they pack up after 400 years of captivity. They pack up all their belongings. And they, the Egyptians give them gold and other things to get them through. And they come to the Red Sea. And what happens? Pharaoh changes his mind. Pharaoh gets all of his army together and says, we've made a mistake in letting those Israelites go. Who's going to build our cities? And so he gets his army together and chases after them. And so what does God do? He puts a pillar of fire between them by night and a pillar of cloud by day so that they couldn't attack the Israelites. But now they're wedged between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. And the Lord tells Moses, stretch out your rod across the sea. And what happens? The land splits, the water splits on either side and leaves dry ground. And the Israelites are able to go across on dry ground. Wouldn't that be awesome? Would you be the person that would like poke your hole in the, the wall of water? I would. I'd be that guy. I'm like, I want to see how this is working. I'd be the guy that would spring a leak. <laughs> trying to plug them all up then. Sorry, Lord. They all get across. Pharaoh's army comes behind them. And what does the Lord tell Moses to do? Stretch your rod back across. And when he does, the walls collapse, of the, those walls of water collapse and drowns the entirety of Pharaoh's army. The chapter before we're, uh, that we're in right now, chapter number 15, Exodus chapter 15, is all about the praise that they sing about that great victory. 
an entire chapter saying, praise God, look what he did. Look what's accomplished. Multiple, multiple blessings. But we find also, let her be here, that against the Lord. Now let's get into this. One month later, this is approximately one month after Pharaoh's army has been destroyed. They've come out of Egypt with a strong and mighty hand. God has taken care of them. But we come to chapter 16, verse number 1. And it says, And they took the journey from Elam, and the, all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. Sinai is the, the mountain of God where eventually Moses is going to receive the Ten Commandments. On the 15th day of the second month after the departure out of the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured. Say, so what does that mean? Can I put it in our English today? They griped. They complained. They started backbiting, gossiping against Moses and Aaron, the very people that had brought them out. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh plots, and we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth in this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Can you imagine this? What were they in Egypt? Slaves. You guys know what they're saying? We were better off as slaves than we are right now. One month had passed. Talk about a short honeymoon. Huh? One month. And they're already complaining, saying, I wish we were back in Egypt. Remember how we could eat anything we wanted? You were a slave. How often this happens when struggles come, when difficulties arise, we forget the manifold blessings of God and begin to complain about what we wish we had. I might have a story of a cowboy that was going down a dirt road. He had his dog in the back of the truck. He had his horse, favorite horse in the back trailer. He hit the corner too fast and rolled the entire truck and trailer, wounding the horse, wounding the dog, and he himself was wounded as well. Finally, a policeman came by and walked to the back where the trailer was, saw the horse was there, and the horse was badly maimed, would not recover, so the police officer took his gun and shot the horse in the head and killed it, put him out of his misery. He walked around to the side of the truck, and he saw part of the truck had landed on the dog. The dog was crying in pain, so he took his revolver again and shot the dog, put the dog out of his misery. He walked around to the cowboy and looked at the cowboy, and he says, Hey, how are you feeling? He said, After what I just saw, I feel great. <laughs> there, was another there was another story. I'm sorry, I pulled stories today. There was a, there was a, a monk... There was a monastery years and years ago, back in the Middle Ages. He went there and he took a vow of silence. Didn't say a word. For 10 years, didn't say a word. Finally, after he called into the superior's office, and the superior looked at the monk and said, do you have anything to say? He said, the food's bad. Wrote it down. 10 more years go by. He didn't say a word. Superior calls him in and says, do you have anything else you want to say? He said, yeah. The bed's hard. He writes that down. Ten more years go by, and he, the superior calls the monk in. It's been 30 years in his vow of silence. He says, sir, do you have anything that you'd like to say after this last ten years? He goes, yeah, I quit. The superior replied to him. He says, it doesn't surprise me a bit. All you did was complain ever since you got here. <laughs> Don't complain. Don't second-guess the Lord. Sometimes when we do, all we focus is on the negative. We forget all the positives is my point. We forget the blessing that I know that I'm on my way to heaven. Huh? The worst thing that can happen to me as a Christian, I were to die, I'll be in the throne room of heaven in the next moment. To be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Huh? We mentioned a couple of folks that passed away. They were both Christians. You know where they're at right now? They're not in pain. They're not in agony. They're rejoicing in heaven with a new body. Huh? No more pain, no more agony, no parting, no sorrow there. The worst thing that happened to us is the best thing. If we're not careful, all we can focus on is everything that's going wrong, and we don't appreciate the beauty 
of the life that God has given to us. Number two, the Lord has an expectation of faith. You know the Lord expects us to trust him? Imagine that. huh? Remember last week what we spoke on, those who were here? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path, right? The Lord wants to bless us. He desires to. But he has an expectation of faith. Trust me. See, what was the point here? Let's go to the story here in Exodus chapter 16. We're going to read a couple of lengthier passages of Scripture here. Verses 11 through 16 says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, Actually, go to letter A. Go ahead and slip down there, Patrick, if you don't mind, too. Every day they were to pick up manna. This is the point of this passage here. Every day they were to pick up manna. Verse number 12. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing as small as a hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. They called it manna. That's what the word manna means. What is it? Now, I wouldn't advise you fellas to say that when your wife cooks. Don't call it manna. <laughs> what is it? You might not be, you may eat McDonald's for a while if you do that. Moses said unto them, this is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Now you say, what's he talking about? The number of your persons means the number of people in your family. The, the dads that were to go around, the men were to go around and pick up exactly what they needed for their family. Not more, not less. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. Say, what do you mean? Well, let it be here. Every man had to have faith for his family. Now, ladies, you need to have faith for your family as well. But that's a different message for a different day. You know what our country needs right now? Godly men. There is a lacking of that in our nation today. Godly men. See, many times men are willing to let the wives go ahead and lead when it comes to spiritual things. Can I encourage you to do something, men? Lead your family as a godly man. Not only does the Lord expect it, but your family needs it. Your country needs it. I love it, the fact that here at Crosspoint, we have godly men that are at the forefront of, of allowing this work to move forward. We need that in our country. But every man was to go out and to gather. And if he had five people in his family, he gathered five of these omers together. If he had ten, he gathered ten of them. Whatever it was, the number of his family, he would gather them as the frost went up and this manna lay on the ground. They would pick it up and they would take it and put it in these baskets and take it back to their, to their tent. Now this is where the important part comes in here. Number one, there were those that had simple faith. There were those with simple faith. Amen? Day, day, day by day faith. What did the Lord tell him to do? Every day when the frost goes up, the manna will be there. I want you to go collect manna, enough for your family, and go put it in your tent. Just for today. Tomorrow there's going to be more manna. So just for today. Don't th only think about today. There's a great lesson we're going to learn about this as we go through this. Just enough for today. Trust me. This is what the Lord wants. Verse number 17. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less, depending on how many people were in their family. And when they didn't meet it with, om with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. I love food. Come on, you bunch of hypocrites. I love food. I have a fascination with cheeseburgers, especially bacon cheeseburgers. I have a love-hate relationship with double-stuffed Oreos. I got a lot of things that I love. But there are some I know that you, you don't care for food like that, and that's not your thing. You're missing out on something wonderful. I just throw that out there. Okay? 
But the Bible says those that had a healthy appetite had enough, and those that ate little had enough. What's the lesson there? God is going to give each and every one of us exactly what we need. Some more, some less. Maybe Caleb is going to have a worse day than what I will. You say, why? Because he's Jamie's son. He's going to have a worse day. <laughs> Maybe Michelle is going to have a harder day than Carissa. God is going to supply the exact amount of blessing, strength, and grace that you need. You don't have to falter or have to worry about can I get through today if we trust in the Lord we'll always make it through we don't have to worry about it. no man lacks I love that huh he that gathered little had no lack he had enough he could eat until he was full they had simple faith that's what we need to have but number two there were those lacking in faith who picked up too much oh here it goes right your thinker gets in the way. God told us to do something, but I, I'm a common sense person, Pastor. Well, we need to be a faith-filled person instead. Verses 19 and 20. And Moses said, let no man leave of it till the morning. You got your omer that you've got, right? Let's just take one of them. I got my omer. I'm the only person in my tent. I fill it up. I gouge my, gorge myself. I'm full. Oh, man, that manna tastes delicious. Moses said, okay, now don't pick up some for tomorrow, late night snack or anything else. Huh? Just eat that what you've got there, and tomorrow some more will be there. What does human reasoning say? Well, let's look at what human reasoning does. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses. They didn't listen. But some of them left of it until the morning. They wanted to make sure they had some for tomorrow. And it bred worms and what? Stank. I love that word. <laughs> you say, we say stunk. No, it stank. Where I grew up, man, that's what you say. Oh, that stank. Huh? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> and Moses was wroth. He was angry with them. Why? What was the problem? They lacked in faith. See, they, they didn't have day-by-day -day faith. They knew that God could give them the manna. They ate the manna from today, but tomorrow it might not be there. So I'm going to go ahead and keep a little extra. Even though God said it will be there tomorrow to your full, but I'm going to hold on to some. You know the interesting thing? The next morning when it stunk, everybody could tell who those people were. You ever think about that? You're going to the tent, going by the tent. Here, everything's going good. Hey, Caleb, how you doing, buddy? Chris, how you doing? Jeremy, phew. What is going on in your tent, man? Jeremy didn't have faith. He gathered more. He did, I don't know if it's going to be there tomorrow. And it stunk. See all these little pockets all over the children of Israel's camp. Whew. Need Febreze or something going on here. A plug-in. It stinks. You know what? When we lack in faith and we don't trust God, it stinks. Do you know why people don't respect Christians much anymore? Because we live just like they do. Huh? The economy goes down, we panic like they do. The, you lose your job, we act just like they do. So why should they respect us? See, what the world needs to see is Christians that have a smile on their face no matter what's taking place in this world. Why? Because I'm just a pilgrim here. Huh? I'm looking for a greater city. I'm looking forward to the fact that I'm going to see him in heaven someday. But I know that the Bible always says this. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. I don't have to worry. Things get tight. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Huh? You know what the Bible says? He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. You know what? If things get rough, he can sell off some cattle too. He'll take care of me. What the world needs to see is true Christianity. True Christianity. Number three, those who wanted to do it their way. Those that wanted to do it their way. Say, what do you mean? By only picking up one day's worth on Friday. Six days a man shall work on the seventh. What does the Bible say? It's a Sabbath day, right? Seventh day, you're supposed to rest. All right, so for six days, every day, pick up just enough for that day. And on the sixth day, I'm going to provide. Let's look at verse number 22. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man. 
twice as much. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seethe that ye will seethe, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until morning. And they laid it up till morning as Moses bade, and it did not stink. Remember that before? It stunk if they kept it overnight before. But when they trusted him on the Sabbath day, by that Friday before the sun went down, to go ahead and have enough for Saturday, that bread didn't stink, even though it was left over. It's a miracle. Six days, verse 26, shall ye gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. In other words, there's no manna going to be on the Sabbath day. No need for you to go out and pick it up off the ground. It's not going to be there. Now, that's pretty common sense, right? Come on, even Baptists can say yes. Okay, that's pretty common sense. Huh? And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather. Huh? It's actually this. It's not my head. Don't hurt. Huh? Moses just told you there's not going to be anything there. Well, I don't know, Moses. I'm still going to go out on Saturday. Where's all the manna? Did you not listen? Huh? And found none. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse you to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. You know what the Lord says? I'm going to give you enough to take care of things. Now I'm going to say something. I don't mean to offend you. I know there are some jobs where you're required to work on Sundays, work on a Wednesday afternoon or evening instead of coming to Bible study. But can I encourage us to do something? Always put the Lord in his proper place. Huh? I could make double time on Sunday if I work on Sunday. Hang on a second. Can the Lord give you more than double time? If you put him first. That's where faith comes in. Pastor, I don't got much time, and that Wednesday night's the only time I got for myself. Will the Lord make enough time for you if you put him first? Say, oh, Pastor, you're meddling now. I know. But that's exactly what the principle is found here. Put the Lord first. You don't have to abuse the Lord's day in order for him to take care of your needs. The Lord's like, I got it covered. I'll give you enough to supply for everything if you'll put me first. Instead of the job, instead of money, instead of things, put me in my proper place. And what will happen? Number three, the Lord gives sufficient faith for the day. The Lord gives sufficient faith for the day. Letter A here, it was enough for each day. It was enough for each day. The Lord knows what tomorrow is going to bring. And so when we take the time, remember I talked about this, that we take our Bible every day. Before we get going with our day, we spend time with him. We get on our knees, kneel beside our bed, or we, wherever we're at, we say, Lord, I need you. I don't know what to bring, but Lord, I know you're going to give it to me. When we stop and give it to the Lord, what's going to happen? The Lord says, I already know what's going to happen in the afternoon. You're going to get your pay cut this afternoon, but it'll be okay. You put me first. I've got you. Amen? Huh? You're going to hear about a passing of a loved one. It's going to break your heart, but it's okay. You can have a hope and not sorrow as those that have no hope. I've got it. We don't know what the day is going to bring, but he says just day by day, trust me. Trust me day by day. Wouldn't it be great if God blessed like he did then. What a miracle that was that they could eat manna every day. It tasted like honey, it said. I picture it's kind of like, you ever been at Logan's? You know that, 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 those, that bread? They get and they put the butter on top of it. Yeah. I told you about my love affair of food, I'm telling you. I didn't get this side by saying no thank you. You say you're not in shape. Pear is a shape, just different type of shape. But you know what? They ate all this food. God provided every day, right? Food. Quail from heaven huh? came and they would beat it down with sticks and they had, they had meat and manna. Angel food, so to speak. Every day. Man, wouldn't you be thankful if that was the case? Huh? Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 through 7. I have it up here on the screen so we'll know. But it was complained about after a while. 
And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a-lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish that we did eat for you. Remember, this sounds familiar, right? Same complaint. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Well, that doesn't even sound good to me, I'll be honest with you, but I guess that was the thing. But now our soul is dried away, for there is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And the manna was a coriander seed and the color thereof as a color of bdellium. Here God is blessing them with food from heaven. And what is their response? They complain. Hmm? It's not enough. God is feeding. You say, how big is this crowd? The children of Israel at this point, they estimate is between two and three million people. God is feeding two to three million people every morning. Twice as much on Friday to make up for Saturday. And it got to the point with all that blessing, all they had to do is walk out of their tent and pick it up. And they're complaining about it. If that doesn't sound like the modern day Christian, I don't know what is. To the rest of the world, we live well. We ought to thank God every day for the blessings that he gives us. Let her see, and then I'm finished today. Another interesting part about the manna, it stopped the day they entered Canaan. The day they crossed the Jordan River, 40 years later. So for 40 years, God, God feeds them with manna for 40 years. That's amazing. The day that they go in and they're getting ready to attack Jericho, they ate the last of their corn from the other side of Jordan, and the Bible says it stopped. Joshua chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the selfsame day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more. Why? Here's the, oh, this is beautiful. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Huh? It can get tiring sometimes. Maybe you'd be the type of person, you know, I'm tired of manna. I want some variety. The Lord says, hey, be patient. Be patient. I still have got the land of Canaan ready. Be patient. It's okay. I want you to have day-by-day day trust in me. And I'm going to bless you in ways that you can't imagine. The theme for our church this year is greater things. What kind of church will we be this year? In our walk of greater faith. Cross Point Baptist Church. Even those who are visiting today. Will our faith be greater this year than it was last year? What will be our response next January. If I ask the same question I started this message off with. How great is our faith? Do we have that kind of faith? You know there were three things that were kept. Three things that were kept. In the Ark of the Covenant. Where the mercy seat of God was. Three things that were kept there. You may not know this. The first was the fact that there was a copy of the Ten Commandments that Moses had carried down from Sinai. That was inside of the Ark of the Covenant. The second thing that was in there was Aaron's rod. They, they questioned whether Aaron was truly the, the priest of God. And God allowed for a dead stick to bring forth branches of a live tree. And they blossomed. They put that inside the Ark of the Covenant. Do you know the third thing they put in there? Manna, an omer of manna went inside there. Do you see the importance of this story in the eyes of God? God said there's three things that I think of all the things we could put in to the Ark of the Covenant. That God, who sits on the mercy seat that was on top of the Ark of the Covenant, he goes, three things that I want, and they all point to me. My commandments to you. My choosing who is to lead and who is not and who is my man or not. And number three, the sufficiency of God. The manna that you eat is going to go inside the Ark of the Covenant. How great is our faith? May we trust him that he can do greater things. If we'll but trust him and have faith, and I'm not going to doubt. Every day this year, folks, let's make sure we say, Lord, I need you. And let him direct and guide us. Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? That's the first faith that you have to have. Once again, I'm not asking 
how much you've given to church. I'm not asking you how long you've been a member. I'm not asking you where, how you grew up or who your parents were. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you have a moment in your life when you say, I know that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm a Christian because I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. That is the initial start of a faith walk. And all of us must start in the same place. All God's people said, amen. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Lord, I know we have many that are visiting with us today. Father, I pray that you'd speak to all of our hearts now. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I don't want you to look around. I don't want you to think about what you're doing next. I want you just to pray just for a moment. And pray simply this, Lord, how great is my faith walk? Not do you have faith, but is your faith increasing? I wonder how many today would say, Pastor Crawford, I know beyond a doubt that if I were to die, I'd go to heaven. I have that start of that faith journey. I have that because I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. If you'd say, Pastor Crawford, I know I'm a Christian. Would you slip your hand up? Say, I know that I'm a Christian. I've accepted Christ as my Savior. Slip your hand up and slip it back down just for a moment. I'm not going to see everybody here. That's between you and the Lord. But I want to praise God for that. Many hands all over the room. You may put your hands down. But can I ask you, those that just raised their hand, is your faith enough day by day? Or is it like a roller coaster? Some days it's great. Some days it's horrible. I wonder how many days say, Pastor, I need to have more consistency day by day to watch God increase my faith. Pray for me. Would you slip your hand up and let me pray for you? Amen. Hands all over the room. Praise the Lord. Slip it up. Slip it back down. I'll pray for you in just a moment. Amen. One final question. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? If you were to die right now, are you certain that your home would be in heaven? That's the start of that faith. You got to start at the right place. I wonder today if there'd be one here today or two that would say, Pastor Crawford, I'm not certain if I were to die that I'd go to heaven. I'm not certain that I'm a Christian. No one's looking. Between me, you, and the Lord, you'd say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you slip your hand up and let me pray for you today? I'm not certain that I'm a Christian. Pray for me. I just want to pray for you. I'll not embarrass you. I promise you that. I just want to pray for you. If you raised your hand or should have raised your hand, you say, how can I know that for certain? How do I make that decision, Pastor? You can make that decision right there in your seat. You don't have to go to a certain place or do a certain thing. We all are saved the same way by coming to Jesus Christ and acknowledging our sin and asking Him to save us. Right there in your seat this morning, you can settle that question and you can know for certain that you're a Christian by praying a simple prayer like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I don't deserve heaven. I know I deserve hell. I know that you died on the cross for my sins. But I ask you now to come into my heart, take away my sin, and take me to heaven when I die. I'm trusting in you and you alone for my salvation. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, if you prayed that prayer this morning, if you say, I prayed that prayer, Pastor, believing it in my heart this morning, would you slip your hand up and let me pray for you? You say, I, I, I prayed that prayer this morning, Pastor. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Just slip it up and slip it back down, and I'll pray for you. If you didn't raise your hand, but maybe you should have, or maybe you're still thinking about it, you don't have to do it right here. Before you go to bed tonight, when you get home, take some time and think about that. Because Jesus loves you and he died for you. And that's the most important question that you can ever answer in your life. Cross Point Baptist Church is about pointing people to Jesus Christ. Let me beg of you, please, to not go one more night not knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Heavenly Father, be with these who've lifted their hands. Those that need to have greater faith, Lord, may you help them to have a meaningful change in their life. Those that raised their hand or did not raise their hand for salvation, may your Holy Spirit convict them to the point that they know they can't take one more day without settling this question. 
Lord, we trust you, Lord, each day that our faith will increase. We ask you as Cross Point Baptist Church that our faith will be greater day by day. In thy precious son's name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. We'll have the ushers come forward. We'll receive our offering. The kids will be coming in from Children's Church in just a second here. I don't know if they're there. Janet, are they ready yet? Are they? Pastor T, not yet? Okay, they'll be on their way in just a second. Um, but I encourage you to give from your heart. If you got a visitor's card, maybe you didn't turn it back in, you can put that in there as well in the offering uh, bag as it goes through. Uh, they'll kind of bring a bag around. We're trying not to pass the plate, so we pass the, uh, the bag through. They'll bring it in front of you. Uh, we don't look at tithing statements here. I have no idea what people give. I don't care what you give. That's between you and the Lord. But I do believe this. If God has a hold of your heart, he also has a hold of your wallet. Okay? So you just give as God directs you, and he'll bless you for that. If you've promised already with faith promise, you can start giving that right away. You don't have to wait until we finally have that number total. But if you promised him to start giving already, I encourage you to start this, this week uh, to give towards faith promise. Brother Steve Sano, would you please turn around, please, and uh, lead us in a word of prayer for the taking of the offering. guys there we go uh as they take the offering we're going to go through just a couple quick announcements uh so this here we do this at the end and then we are going to have communion today so stick around here with us just for a moment uh but as looking at our at our uh there we go our announcements coming up here um on the 15th we have a red cross blood drive we have a couple people that have already volunteered to help with that but if you're interested in getting on a rotating schedule with that every two months we have the, the uh, american red cross comes here and then we, we have donation people donate blood they come here one of the reasons we do as a church we want people that wouldn't come into our church any other way but they'll come in to go ahead and give blood it gives us an opportunity to give them a track an opportunity for them to see what our church is about and uh, we're a church plant so it's an opportunity for us to be an impact in their life on the 16th on the 16th that's next this next saturday right Next Saturday, uh, there's a wall builders. There's a, a worksheet that's out there. It's for all of our men. Uh, the men. All the men that are here, you are welcome. You don't have to be a member or an attendee of Cross Point. You're welcome to come to this. We get together. We have donuts and coffee, and we're going to be looking at Jacob wrestling with God. That's the, uh, the theme for this, uh, this next wall builders. And the sheets are out there, or you can go to our website, crosspointbc.com, and you can download on a PDF there. Uh, the worksheet I encourage you before you come on Saturday complete the worksheet so when you get here you can just have the Bible study and discuss what's going on okay Pastor T will be running that for me uh, as my wife and I are going to take a well-needed vacation for a couple days so we'll be gone uh, from Thursday and through the following Saturday so I won't be here next week Pastor T will be preaching next week if you're not heard Pastor T I encourage you to come uh, he is like the uh, I'd say mini me but he's the, like the, the gigantic me and uh, I enjoy hearing my son preach. I'm sure you'll enjoy him as well. Uh, but he has a heart towards, towards the Lord. I encourage you to remember that. And then once again, uh, on the 31st, we'll have our One Vision Sunday. All right, we're going to go ahead and have communion at this time. And so if you have a, a cup when you came in, you can go ahead and pull this out. Once again, because of COVID, we're doing this differently than we normally would. If you did not get one, Brother Steve has some there. Go ahead and slip your hand up. And uh, Jamie, could you grab one of those from him, please, brother? And he can take one side and you'll take the other. If you need one of these cups, Brother Steve, why don't you let Jamie grab one? He can go over here to the side. There we go. And while they're doing that, I want to read just a couple passages of Scripture here, just as a mindful of this. And we're gonna, my wife's going to play just a hymn here just real quick in a second. Give us a time of prayer. I don't believe this is a somber event, but it should be a sober event. You say, what do you mean by that? The word sober literally means, we kind of got the word sober differently in our vernacular. The word sober means in your right mind, okay, with a right mind. And so when we come to this time of partaking of the Lord's Supper, uh, I do believe that we ought to be of a right mindset and understand what each of these things mean. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 27, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup uh, of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, 
And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. That examination is very important. You say, why? This represents the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood atonement. We ought to have a mindset. Now, it's not the actual body and blood. There are some denominations that believe that. This is a picture of it. But be, how can we say that I am partaking of the body and blood of the Lord and yet be living like the devil? That's exactly what Paul is talking about here. Your mindset is wrong. So there ought to be nothing between us and our Savior when we come to the time of communion. So I'm going to encourage you just a moment to pray and say, Lord, is there any sin that's unconfessed? Is there anything that I'm doing that's not what I ought to be doing? A lacking of faith, whatever it is. And to get that right with the Lord before you partake. You say, why? The Bible says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning, not thinking of the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, he's not talking about the sleep of going to bed at night. He's talking about death. The Lord feels very strongly about this, this aspect of communion. And so I want to encourage us as people, before we partake of it, to really make sure our minds are right and that we're truly thankful and living like it for the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have children that are here, don't just simply allow them to partake of communion. I believe you, they need to be accepting Christ as their Savior on their own and need to be trying to live for the Lord. Uh, if you have a child and you, maybe they don't understand what you're doing, parents, is a great opportunity for you to explain to them what this is, how they should be, and that they need to accept Christ as first as Savior, and then they'll understand what the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is about. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. So let's take a moment. We're going to pray just for a few moments here silently as my wife plays the piano. Just bow your head where you're at and think about the body and blood of the Lord and ask the Lord to convict if there's any sin there, anything that needs to change, and let him direct you. Take your communion cup. If you take the, there's a top layer. You don't take off the whole thing, but take off the top layer, and you can take out. There's a wafer that's on the top of the cup. If you haven't got that, go ahead and do that. Take a second. We'll give you a moment to do that. And uh, once again, the the wafer that's here uh, is a picture of the unleavened bread. Uh, what the Jews would do on the Passover, and what Jesus did in the upper room with his disciples, is they would partake of unleavened bread. Leaven is always a picture of sin in scripture so what is this picture it pictures the perfection of the sacrifice of jesus christ he lived his life for 33 years on this earth and never sinned one time and the sin once again we we put on him he took upon himself our sin and he became sin for us but his body shows the fact that he was sinless and that's the only sacrifice that god will accept remember the story of the lamb the lamb had to be without blemish and without spot that's why this wafer is without leaven. It's a picture of Christ's body without the sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 25. It says, and after the same man, oh, excuse me, it says, uh, I received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And I ask Brother Jamie if you'd stand, please, and lead us in a word of prayer, and then we'll partake of the bread in just a moment.
when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. The cup, if you go ahead and take, you can take the top part off of this carefully. Once again, once COVID is over and we can go back, we'll do this differently. But for this right now, I think it's important for us to continue to do, to do communion, even in the midst of the pandemic. The blood, of course, is, is pictured in the shedding of blood. There's no remission of sins. It was not enough to simply give a lamb that was without blemish. That lamb had to be sacrificed. And the blood of that lamb would then be sprinkled upon the mercy seat of God, claiming God's mercy through the blood. That's what all the sacrifices through the Old Testament were for, those blood sacrifices. Jesus Christ shed his blood. He was a lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And it's his blood that once again we recognize the fact that it's the only blood that can wash away the sins of mankind. Our blood is not sufficient. The blood of any bulls and goats, no matter how many there are, is not sufficient. It must be Jesus Christ and he alone. I'd like to ask Brother Larry Doyle, if you wouldn't mind, Brother, could you stand and raise your voice and pray for the partaking of the cup? And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Verse number 26 says this, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. I believe Jesus is coming again. Amen. I hope he comes today so you don't have to go to work tomorrow. That'd be great. Let's go ahead and stand. I have the worship team, if you mind, come on up here. If I have all the worship team leaders, just quickly come on up. And uh, we're going to sing, Thank You, Lord, for Saving My Soul. Uh, those that, um, let me go ahead and give these guys these, uh, there we go, they're on their way up. As they're, ta- as they're waking their way up, I want to thank you for coming and being part of our service today. Uh, those that are here from Solid Rock, we're so thankful and grateful to have you as a part of our service today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I always tell people, I'm an open book. Uh, I'm a person that, you can ask me any question. I'll try to give you the best biblical answer I can. If I can't tell you the right answer, dumb looks are always free. And I'll just tell you, I don't know. Uh, so we'll have to ask Jesus when we get there. Uh, but don't ever feel like you'll offend me. Uh, you can feel free to ask me. Many of you have got my text number as well. You can text me. I prefer you don't text me at 3 in the morning. My wife answers all those. So um, <laughs> I encourage you. Uh, though to reach out if you'd like i'd love to sit down and talk with you and share more about what this church is about god has blessed us here greatly and we're thankful that you are here to be a part of it this morning uh, we've got a number of other visitors are here as well thank you for coming and uh, we always appreciate the guests that the lord brings our way I encourage you if you do not have a church home that you attend regularly i encourage you to come back this coming wednesday we'll continue our bible study we're going through the book of ephesians uh, in ephesians chapter 5 uh, we're going to continue that we're talking about psalms hymns and spiritual songs this week making melody in your heart to the lord i encourage you to come be a part of that wednesday night at seven we do have an awana program for the kids that are sixth grade and below they can come be a part of on wednesdays and a teen program that uh, mustafa here runs uh, over here in the teen room oh pastor t i'm sorry pastor t my bad uh, <laughs> uh but I'm, we love to serve the lord here and we love to have a happy smile on our face. I'm going to be standing back. I'm not going to shake hands, those that don't know. I did have open heart surgery a little over a year ago. And uh, I had five bypasses done. And uh, so I've got some other health risks and stuff. But I want to be back there and say thank you. I'll stay back there until everybody's gone. So if you wanted to ask me some questions or you just want to roam around and look at the building, you feel free to do that as well. Thank you so much for coming today. Those that are regulars at Cross Point Baptist Church, I tell you every week, I mean it even more so today. I love you. I appreciate you so much. There's nothing else in this world I'd rather be doing than being your pastor. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life. Let's go ahead and complete this song and the pastor team will dismiss us.
Lord dismiss.